Hey, this is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com. This is the first in a series of short videos dealing with the preferences in Studio One. I know that's not super exciting, but it is helpful. I guarantee this, you'll learn something you didn't know uh, that'll help you be more effective and faster at working in Studio One. So under the general page, the general tab, uh, one thing you should know is always have check for updates on. PreSonus is always updating with cool new things. You want to make sure you're on uh, you're getting those. Secondly, you can change what happens when you start up Studio One. Now you can open the last project you were working on, uh, a default song or a new song. If I were to change this, which I'd leave it alone, uh, I would have it open the last song I was working on, which is great for if you're working on a mixing project and you want to just open it right where you left off. Otherwise, I leave this off most of the time, all the time, and uh, just have it default to the start page. Now the other window here, this is a little more helpful, uh, is the keyboard shortcuts window. If you're familiar with uh, DAWs like Logic, uh, you're actually able to um, customize the keyboard shortcuts quite a bit, and Studio One's the same way. I would recommend not customizing a whole lot, okay? You can really just get lost in that and not really make any music. I would recommend coming over here and making sure that you have Studio One selected. Now, if you're just migrating over from Pro Tools and you don't know your f the first thing about working in Studio One, you can select the Pro Tools keyboard mapping scheme, which essentially all the a lot of the familiar keyboard shortcuts that you're used to from Pro Tools will now be mapped in Studio One. So Command Spacebar will be Record, and uh, T and R will be Zoom In and Zoom Out, the stuff you're used to. Uh, they won't map out 100% because Studio One is different, uh, but you will have some familiar keyboard shortcuts that might help you at least get to know Studio One a little better. But I would recommend switching back to uh, the actual Studio One settings as soon as possible. Uh, because uh, for one thing, it's you'll you'll better learn the way Studio Studio One was designed to work. And secondly, when you watch these videos, I'm going to be using the Studio One shortcuts, and it'll be easier to follow along if you're using them as well. Now, one example of how to change a shortcut. There's this one little. I wish they'd change it, but they haven't yet. To record, to start recording in Studio One, the keyboard shortcut is the asterisk on the number pad. Well, if I'm using my laptop, I don't have that button. It's not on there. So if I'm working on a session on location with my laptop, I will actually change this. So instead of number pad, we can double click on it, get rid of that, and then we can just type whatever key we want. Let's say we thought we wanted it to be R. Mm, it says that's already a shortcut. We'll have to turn that one off if we don't if we want it to be R. Okay, so that's no good. How about the number zero across the top? Okay, that appears to not be taken. Let's do that. We'll click assign, hit enter, whatever you want to do. And now zero is my record button. Okay, it's just, it's that simple. And it'll tell you if it's already used in some other place so you can really find the right shortcut or customize things however you want. Very cool technique, very cool thing to use uh, in a pinch. So hope that helps. See you in the next video.